Welcome back to the Tiger Hangar. This is Mike. I'm coming at you with the KFC Octoclones reissue. Now, this is the ones that just came out. I've probably had it for a couple days now, uh, messing with it. And I want to say it's a good set. It's not without its problems, but the problems are not too big of a deal. And for a great looking set for a great price, uh, let's get right into this. A look at the box. They actually changed the packaging. The artwork still looks the same. The Everything still looks the same, except the orientation is different. And I think, uh, well, I don't know if the old one had been put out as the camera mode, and then you put it into the robots, but these come as the robots inside. They come set up uh, in robot mode. So that's a plus if you don't plan on turning it into a camera, but it's not too bad of a transformation. In fact, actually, it's a much easier transformation. I thought I was in for hell with a transformation, and it turns out it's not gonna be that bad, so. Anyway, here it is. The box the old one was a cube so uh basically half the size but twice the width and that's the way that one was i think it was a picture there was a i don't know i don't know about the old one but here's the instructions and the cards and all that fun stuff that go with it so let's get into the review and remember until all are one Till all are one. Till all are one. Till all are one. We all are one now, Prime. That's not what I was talking about. Ugh. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a good look at these guys. Now, first of all, you're going to look and see. They all do look pretty close to the same. Of course, this guy here has his circle in there, which which is actually cartoon accurate. There's two that look like that and one that looks like this. And his, these little pieces here are a little higher. Now I do want to point out when we get to the comparisons to animation, these things sometimes are there and sometimes they're not in the animation. So it comes and it goes. So really the aesthetic choice to put that in there is that's something that either you're going to like it or you're not going to like it. You're going to want that in there. You're not going to want that in there. So, so comparisons to other sets, that's going to be in there. Looking on down, uh, they, they have some paint, and where it's painted, it's painted well, and where it's not painted, it's just regular old plastic. And I gotta say, for the price point, these are $130, uh, it's, it's a good set. And I'm, I'm happy with the paint, and they look really good on a shelf, so uh, that really works out. Let's go ahead and get one of these and take a deeper, closer look at one of these guys. Let's look at the articulation with them. Now the shoulder goes out to about here, and all the way around you have a swivel right there swivels right there you got a double jointed elbow the double jointed elbow uh can't really do as much as you'd like it to because of the design of the arm so that's kind of sad the hand it holds the gun really well because the thumb is the thumb doesn't move and then the other three fingers are pinned at one it's kind of an old way of doing things, and so they didn't really upgrade anything. And when I do, they do reissues, they don't upgrade stuff usually. They fix problems, but they don't really upgrade them. Okay, looking at the head, he goes way up as part of the transformation. And down a, down a little, but not much, all the way to the side. But I get everything I need out of that. Which, I mean, if he looks this way, he can't see anything because it's blocked. So, I mean, he doesn't really need to look that much, does he? Down to the leg. Oh, it almost goes the 90 degrees forward, but the backpack blocks it in the back, but it actually goes further back in the back. The knee, not double jointed. Double jointed knee, and that's about all you can get out of it. Unless you start transforming it and open it up, but I wouldn't do that. Now, the, I think the biggest problem with these guys is the feet. And when you look at it, it's it looks like it might be pretty stable, but there's that extra hinge going on there there's a lot going on with this foot and when you when you go to posing it you put it down like you have to make sure the feet are lined up and then when you pick them up and move them sometimes the feet uh well they're doing good now so hey let's talk about a problem and then the problem go away i like that let's look at the gun accessory this is really interesting the way the gun works and if i can get it out of his hand they hold them really well See, there's what I'm talking about with the feet. Now, this is part of the, I guess, the, the 
viewfinder for the view piece, the lens, this is a third of the lens, and then you put the, the post for the leg post, fold that around in there and put it in here and clip it in and then you make the gun, which is ingenious, uh, but I think it's a silly looking gun to tell you the truth. But I like the fact that they used all those parts. So, I mean, that's cool. I like that. But for like a masterpiece gun, like, is this a masterpiece gun? Now, I think the back section, I've been looking and looking and looking, but I think the back section is actually uh, in the animation. It all looks the same. They look the same from the back. So having this kind of kibble hanging around the back, like this isn't a big deal if they all look the same, but this is different. But in the end, I really don't care. Like I, I'm not going to display it from that from that angle, and the backpack doesn't really bother me. In fact, the backpack makes it for an easier, smoother transformation than I thought it was gonna be. So, I'm okay with that. All right, so let's go ahead and compare him to Make Toys and the animation still. And so, one thing I wanna point out, Make Toys went with no uh, shoulder pad pieces. You don't see that on the Make Toys. And they went with the shoulder pad pieces, which, by the way, is cartoon accurate in some scenes, it's flat in others, it just really depends on what episode, what scene, what you see. The other thing is, I think that the coloring and the way they painted that does look more screen accurate. I, for some reason, like the transparent. Uh, I, I know people feel like the transparent stuff is cheap and gimmicky, and, and I see that. Uh, so this is more screen accurate, so on a shelf, this has a more mature look to it. The head sculpt, I I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell which one has the better head sculpt, but uh, I like the silver paint on this, but I kind of think this is more tune accurate on the, on the, on the face, just the face uh, paint. As for the rest of them, uh, I just think the slimmer silhouette versus the short stubby silhouette, I think that, I, I think it looks better in that regard. So, the Make Toys one was a good set, and it, it was fun. Let's look at the back of these guys real quick. There we go. And I, I don't know, I, I think that does look pretty clean. I think they both kind of look clean uh, from that angle. And then the sides, you have some kibble on the legs over here that you don't have over here. So it cleans up pretty well, actually. It cleans up pretty well. It looks good. Uh, looks pretty tune accurate. And it's really, really tall. Just really tall in comparison. Here he is with his missile launching accessory, which is the flash, turns into a missile launching accessory. Uh, that's pretty cool, I mean, it looks good, it does the job. All three of these guys have this little tab right here, so you could put laser beak, or uh, in this case, we're putting buzzsaw on here. The official MP will fit on there just fine. Uh, I don't think those giant MMC ones will fit. And just like Soundwave. Good birdie, good birdie. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this transformation. And it's not too bad. So most people like to take it from bot or camera mode to the bot mode. Put the fists in here, backwards. And I think I'll go from bot to camera just because that's what I don't see anyone doing, so. Put the fist in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this backpack around and kind of fold this stuff out. And we need to get that backpack moved around, lift this piece up so it's out of the way. And some people like to do different things with it, but just simply pull that arm to the back. And if you get the backpack all the way around, you'll be good to go. Oh, I need to pull this out and it comes all the way around, it's fine. And that's really, it's gonna give it that smooth look to it. Next, we're gonna do pretty much the same, similar things that we see. Let's get the arms folded to the back here. So there was a clearance issue on that guy. Then we're gonna move this around like this. It's gonna look like that. Okay, now we gotta come down here and we gotta pop these open. And they're connected there's a connector piece in it, so 
you don't want to break it. So do the same thing on both sides. You gotta get that finger in there. There it goes. And then just open everything up. And you're gonna have to fold. All right, a couple of pins that come out here. This is where you need a spudger if you don't have really good nails. Well, come on, come on out, there it goes. That guy came out. And then this one here. So those pieces are gonna combine with each other. I think you can see them better like that. So. And then right here, then you're also, I gotta open this up. Open this up and then fold this around to cover that. That covers that. Take care of the feet. Okay, we're gonna be folding this up into here. That is a tight, tight fit. Now there are our tolerance issues on this set. Uh, they, they were there all along, they're not fixed, but it's still a good set, so. It's funny how much of this feels like the uh, Siege version. All right, so that's there. This is going to fold over. Bring this out and, okay, so you gotta get this top piece out and around. It, it's just, you know what, I kind of feel like, like, in a way, I'm just being a little rough with it, but it doesn't feel like anything's gonna break. In order to get all these things lined up, I do feel a bit rough with this thing. And you're basically just right here turning into a camera Gotta flatten those knees out. And all these tabs gonna line up. And this is a fiddly part. Getting them all to line up just right. And there it is. Oh, oh, I had it. Yeah. It's not that hard to do. It's just lining everything up at once. And I forgot to push the head back. Not, not a big deal, close that down. Do the other side, you're just lining everything up exactly the same as you did the first side. All these tabs need to tab in. Feels like an Ultra Magnus moment. Open, darn it. Tab in, darn it, tab in. Looks like it's all about to just tab right in there. There we go, there we go. See how that foot went in there just right. I didn't get this side in there just right. So push all that down and it caused it to come untapped a bit. So yeah, it is a little tabtastic, but it's not, the end of the world it's not that hard it's just once you get it all of it set as a brick it's a brick it's brick number one so i'm gonna do the same thing and we'll be back with brick number two all right we got brick number two I do want to point out a couple of things making sure these knee joint you want you can only fold the one knee joint the other one needs to stay straight uh the other thing is i guess on the first one i forgot to pull these little connector pieces out now on to our third brick. All right, I wanna, I wanna say something about this guy. I took him all apart. I don't know, you can see a light going on in there maybe. I got the light feature to sort of work and uh, I do not recommend you mess with the light feature. I love lighting features and stuff like that. I do love that stuff, but on this 
the way they designed this thing for the lighting feature to put batteries in it, you gotta take the whole thing apart. I do not like that at all. So I do like the ratchets in this thing though. Okay, so you're flipping the backpack around like the other ones and getting all these pieces out. And this has quite a few pieces here that double hinge out. There it goes. This guy here. It just feels tight, like that slides up and goes around. So, so look at let's look at that again. It slides up and goes around. The other one just kind of popped right out for me, which well probably wasn't the right thing to do, but it was what I did. So, all right. So we got this piece up here. Pull all that up. Put his head back, and then we're gonna start working on getting his arms orientated the way we did with the other ones. Tuck the fists away. Same thing over here. I like to go backwards with fists if I can, so I can grab something to get it back out. That's just me. That's a me thing. All right, so let's get that there. And I think it, you orientate it where it's, yeah, like that, that's better. Orientation. Open up the bottom of the legs again. Pulling outward. Got that one. Let's get this other one out. There are, uh, and I said it already, but so many similarities to this and the Siege one. But then, of course, this has a whole lot more panels to it. So fold up the feet. Like so I've popped that little metal rail piece out. And you, and when you're doing, when you make it, looking at this set, it's like all these little pieces for the transformation and the leg pieces and this and that, the foot pieces, I bet you they're all exactly the same. The only difference is some of the way they connect, where they have their connector parts. Like all of this, like this whole little rotating piece, all that is exactly the same. All right, so you got that thing around. You're basically, basically creating what looks like a stripe along it. And then it's time to clip this stuff together. Um, I gave up on these inner pieces that keep collapsing on themselves, so. Hopefully this holds it well enough. We're gonna fold it up into this whole mechanism again, just like the other one. We gotta make sure that these knees are straight. The top knee joint is straight, not curved. Can you see all that that's going on there? Gotta get those hands in there. And this, again, is not positioned it's not tolerance you're, you're, you feel it feels weird you're, you're shoving them in there it doesn't feel comfortable I don't like that part where you're shoving those in there and it doesn't feel comfortable come on come back out there your metal piece metal connector piece stay out all right so we basically just folded the legs up and the arms are in there this needs to connect in the center so that'll hold it pretty close to tight why isn't it popping in there? Tolerance issue right there. Again. Now it's funny because these sides are gonna be covered by the other bots, so it's almost like uh, there's no need to put any more stuff to cover it. It's gonna be kind of, kind of open and gappy there. Anyway. Gotta make this line up. And it folded back in. Now this is fiddly, I'm not gonna lie, this is a fiddly part, but it's not really that hard. Well, it's not as hard. It's hard to keep it on camera while you do it. That's the hard part. Line up, dude. Then it lines up, and we got this top piece 
Need to work on that top piece a bit more. There we go. That pushed it all back. That is a bit of a not good. All right, now it's snapped in place. Now it all just popped into place. That's what I've been feeling with this. Like as I'm transforming it, I, I do a step and then I just kind of squeeze on pieces and they pop into place. They don't slide into place smooth. It's just uh, feels like brute force. All right, so there's a hole. There's a tab. There's a tab, like a double tab. So you can, can you see all this? These two pieces here going together and that going in the hole and it just lines up. Same thing on the other side. That's probably the easiest part of the transformation right there. Now, we need to build some parts for this. I'm gonna take this flash, transform it back into a flash, and it's so fast you transform it in a flash and put it on there. Boom. Disassemble all the guns. Flip up the handles on the lenses. Then I'm gonna put this in and it fits just right. Same thing here. You see the side that has the notches and everything lines up and matches so you know you got it right. Okay, so that's snapped in. And, and there's the three grooves, there, it, it, then there's a, like a gap here. So that really kind of helps you guide exactly where it goes. And this last one, you're gonna kind of like open up these pieces here, slide it in, and then you wanna clip everything in together and it'll make a nice solid connection once it all clips together. You hear that snap and that's what it looks like. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of, of this thing a bit, but maybe not really. All right. So let's go ahead and put the, put this on here. Yeah. It snaps on kind of the tabs coming undone just a bit so there it goes and let's build this thing here so here's the part of the stand and that part clips into the top so let's get these in here all right so we talked about some tolerances put this into this hole and then this into the other hole so there it is. It is huge. This is a massive beast of a beast. Wow. Uh, I didn't think it'd be that big. But then again, the figures are big. So uh, it's probably the biggest alt mode. It's the, the biggest figures of all of the sets that are out. And, uh, and keeping them to like in a big square is kind of a challenge. But you know, you get to, you get to the point. Uh, it has a couple of gimmicks. Okay, so I'm gonna use this the 1216 they don't have the 1220 like you need and it still worked uh, i kind of figured it would but eh, not bad run around run around and take some pictures all you want but there it is there you go but you can just pop this piece off and then you can put on the manual Film Advance, which is this guy right here. And you can manually advance it once it plugs in all of the way. There you go. Manually advancing that. Let's look at it compared to, so the only other figure that I have, uh, that I'm comparing it to. I guess I could have transformed make toys, but here's this one. And uh, this is the, well, it's kind of not fair, but it is fair. But this is the Siege one, and I just kind of leave this one in uh, camera mode because I think it's cool. And it's kind of an idea, like this is 60, and that's twice the price. And, and I always like kind of looking at it like that. <sighs> this would be cool if it was like a little bit bigger, 
like this size. Well, not quite this big, but anyway, there it is. So this is a good set. I definitely recommend this. If you uh, don't have a reflector or you want one that looks super screen accurate or pretty screen accurate, uh, this is definitely a good set. For 130 bucks, uh, I would be all over it. I, it has die cast, but it doesn't feel as heavy as the Fans Toys ones. I no longer have the Fans Toys ones. Um, make toys wise, it, it's, they're a good set too. Uh, I prefer this to the Make Toys. I think the Make Toys are a little bit more fun to transform, but for a shelf presence, for figures on the shelf, I prefer this. Like, subscribe to your dear and hang around.